Thank you, Mr. Gilman. Uh, good evening. Uh, welcome to our school committee meeting. It is Wednesday, January 22nd at 7 o'clock. I'd like to call our meeting to order. Um, could we first please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Um, and I believe we have our student representative from the high school this evening, Mr. Will Champagne. Uh, good evening, Will. Um, so our senior, Lauren D'Amico, she just recently got recognized for the uh, Scholar Award at Douglas High School. Um, it's given annually by the Massachusetts Association of School Superintendents. And she was recognized on January 8th uh, at the annual Scholars Luncheon, which was held at Assumption College. Holy Cross. Oh, at Holy Cross. Holy Cross, yep. Um, students today just completed the last day of midterms, and tomorrow we'll start with the third term. So it was pretty stressful, but. Halfway through the year. <laughs> yep, we are. Wow. I know it's going by quick this year. <laughs> <laughs> Um, our United Athletic Team will play a volleyball match against Uxbridge on January 30th at the Uxbridge High School from 3 to 5. Um, the annual snowball dance will be next Saturday from 6.30 to 9.30, and that's uh, February 1st. And our peer, le peer leaders collected uh, non-perishable foods, and our best buddies made blankets during the holiday season, and all of this was donated to the Burncoat High School. So. Great. And oh, Will, is the, has the buzz begun as we are f quickly approaching that festive time of year known as the Winter Carnival, uh, the decorating in the windows, and all the mayhem that goes along with it? All, right, all that's going to be starting pretty soon. I know we're, my grade's already having meetings for the uh, lip sync lip and just sync all the and activities that are going to go on. So, yeah, it should be fun. Nice. Yeah. Always, always exciting. And uh, you mentioned the Unified Sports, which is it is against Uxbridge. Um, Uxbridge Volleyball. Right. And uh, we were talking today at the admin meeting, and uh, we believe that we have lined up two bowling matches with a number of, hopefully with a number of different schools over in Hopedale at the uh, community house, which is right next door to the, uh, to the high school itself. And um, they have, I think, four lanes? I think it's four lanes. Maybe four lanes. Four lanes, and it's, it's candle pin. So watch out for the seven ten split. Wow. <laughs> but uh, it'll be. It, we had a really good time last year. A horrible day, it poured it like crazy. Um, but we had a great time, and it was us Sutton, Hopedale, Nipmuc. I think I'm forgetting. Was there somebody else? Was it Rock four of us? That was BMR, right? Yep. Okay. So um, we'll have to see that continuing to yeah excellent have some opportunities mm -hmm. and, and we'll get that ironed out pretty soon as well so Stuff. all right all right well yeah. thank you will questions for will mm -hmm. all right thanks, thanks will appreciate it thank you well, let me get some rest i know you've been studying all night long <laughs> midterms time to go home this is so cool get, get some get some rest uh, next on our agenda is our public comment and communications. Uh, the school committee welcomes public comment on items that are within the scope of the school committee's responsibilities, but not on the agenda this evening. Anyone here for anything not on the agenda this evening? Okay, seeing none. Um, old business. Um, anyone here of old business? I do want to bring up one um, item of old business, and I apologize for not getting it onto the agenda. Um, kind of resolved late last week. Um, we've been as you all know, we've been working with Mr. Maines on um, whether he's going to be back with us next year. Um, and the last time we've really discussed this was probably back in November, I'm guessing. Um, but during that time, since then, we've been uh, in discussions with Mr. Maines around how do we keep him around knowing that he's uh, in a place where he's getting ready for retirement. <coughs> um, and what we've been working on is, is bringing him back on a, on a modified schedule um, or a reduced schedule. Um, there are provisions within the retirement um, laws within Massachusetts that will allow Mr. Maines to actually retire, and I think he has his paperwork all ready to go um, with that. Um, but then he can still come back and work on in an interim basis um, with some limitations on the amount that he can earn and the amount of hours that he can um, work. 
Um, so within those parameters, um, we've come to an agreement um, with Mr. Maines on a reduced contract. Um, the terms of the contract are, uh, it would be a $97,000 contract with us versus the, the current salary of 165 that he has uh, right now. Um, a reduced number of days, his, his current um, schedule is, is uh, a 213 day work year once, once you kind of take out his vacation, personal days and, and holidays. Um, and under the new contract, he'd be here for 157 days. Uh, the math on that is 190 days, less 13 holidays, less 20 vacation and, and personal days for 157 days um, in district. Um, so we, we have a verbal agreement on this right now. Um, we're working with our, our labor attorney on drawing contracts for it. Um, it's something that we've been thinking about a lot. We know it's not um, an ideal solution, but it's something that the committee felt very strongly that we wanted to keep Mr. Maines around for another year um, to keep us on the same path that we've been on for the last few years under, under his stewardship. Um, so we, we felt that there was stronger pros um, with the solution than, than any cons that might come with it, but we do know that there are some particular, you know, some cons that come with it or some drawbacks that come with, you know, with um, not having a full-time superintendent on board. Um, some of those cons are just, you know, not, not having someone here for building administrators in, in different buildings to, to fall back on or to escalate issues to. Um, so in order to help address that particular um, con, we've asked uh, Ms. Urquhart um, in her capacity as our assistant superintendent of student support services to be to fill in for Kevin whenever he is not um, on site, um, and to handle any escalations of issues or any any matter that requires immediate superintendent um, attention um, until such time as Mr. Maines will be back on, back on site to deal with anything like that. So, um, so that's where we're at. I feel like I've left some things out there. Um, I don't know if you want to comment. No, so, um, you know, one of the things that in the discussions with, with the committee um, that I felt comfortable with, and, I, and I, I hope that the committee does as well, I know that Brett has mentioned that he does, and we did have an opportunity to meet, is that we do have a, a very strong administrative team. Um, you have three of the members sitting here right now and, and others who are uh, integral to what we do. Um, you know, I, I'm, I'm very confident that with the, um, the people that are in place, and the, um, their skill set that will be operating just like any other day. So, uh, um, you know, I think it's, 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 a, it's an opportunity. Uh, I'm, I'm appreciative if you, know, you can kick me to the curb anytime you want, I suppose, but um, it, I think it's a great opportunity for me. It's also a, um, an opportunity for the district to do a long-term and a careful search coming up next year and um, you know to maybe get ahead of the the the, um, the rush for hiring superintendents you'll you'll be ahead of the game and um, if, if you post it in November I think you'll have somebody in place by January and and if I'm able to help them with the transition I'm happy to do so so thank you for the opportunity welcome thank you any other comments from anyone here so <coughs> So there'll be more to come on that. Um, we welcome any feedback from folks um, with regards to this uh, announcement. Again, we, we realize it's not a perfect solution, so if there are concerns, we want to hear from them so we can help the district work through whatever those um, concerns are um, to ensure that you know we're able to kind of keep the district um, kind of operating s as smoothly as it has over the last few years under Mr. Means' leadership. So, so with that, I have a letter for you oh. <laughs> that will announce that I plan to retire on June okay. 30th. Yeah, so, so there are some, some unusual machinations with this, I guess. So Ms. Mr. Uh, Means will be retiring and then will be coming back to us in, in, a, in an interim capacity um, under this arrangement. So um, just want to mention that the, you know, this isn't an un, kind of precedent arrangement. It is, it is unusual, um, but um, other districts um, in, in researching this, I've, I've found districts across the country that have, have moved either to a um, a partial or reduced schedule with their superintendent or um, in some cases um, just splitting their superintendent schedule across multiple districts um, in, in certain cir circumstances. So, um, you know, we know that Mr. Maines has been a very hands-on um, superintendent in his time here. Um, so this just might mean that he'd be a little less hands-on, which, you know, 
probably has some drawbacks and probably be good for some folks in, in some ways as well. Um, I'm sure they'll be happy to have me out of there. Here. Joking with him that maybe, you know, there's certain things that he gets involved with maybe he doesn't have to get involved with. So um, you know, this will hopefully uh, keep, keep him focused on the things that he really needs to have his focus on. So, yeah. And, and there, this is not, uh, believe me, I'm not a trailblazer. I'm not, for, not the first one ever, who's ever done this in, in the state of Massachusetts. There's been, there's been a number of people who have done similar uh, such things. And um, so um, I'm, I'm confident it will work out well. Excellent. All right. Well, glad to have you back on board for next year and, and uh, looking forward to uh, continuing uh, plan to move the district forward. So, I can right. hear you, Mr. Sokol. I can hear you telling me, are you crazy? <laughs> <laughs> I can hear you. <laughs> All right. With that, any new business anyone would like to address? Okay. Moved then we'll move on to Mr. Maines' superintendent's report. So. We are going to begin with uh, Mr. Souza is going to do uh, pre present to the committee. Uh, we had an opportunity to meet last week, I believe it was, with the budget subcommittee, um, and um, Donna is going to walk us through um, the needs of the district and the needs for keeping us current and up to date. Um, you know, the, 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 this building is now, I think, in its 16th year, so. Some of these things, some of the things that are in here are 16 years old. Um, yes. I would imagine that that projector and that board is 16 years old. The board is actually, the projector is not. It's already one of the ones that I had to replace. Okay. And yeah. then there's also uh, the, most of the desktops within the district, within the, within the building and so forth. So, but she'll certainly share with us. For the massive crowd here to be able to see. Can the people in the back row see okay? <laughs> Okay, um, as Mr. Maine said, I just want to discuss my, my plan for replacing and the state of our technology in the district. Um, needed technology updates have been postponed for multiple years um, due to budget constraints. Um, you know, when they're talking laying people off, I'm not going to tell them, well, but I want more computers lay a few more people off. So. But with that, I will say, uh, to Donna's credit, she's done a masterful job um, in, in keeping us as current as possible, uh, along with her crew, with Mr. Villamere and, and so forth. So um, that's true. There has been a lot of precedent where money has been very tight, but you have still been very creative and, and, and very thoughtful, and, and we've benefited tremendously from that leadership. Thank you. Um, so I say we've put things off. Um, so. After some conversations with Mrs. Ke Mrs. Keegan and uh, Mr. Maines, and so I've kind of put together a five-year plan, roughly, of how to get us back to where we need to be. There's nothing new here. We're not adding any new abilities, new capabilities, new programs. This is just to keep what we currently have in the district up to date. Um, now, like at the beginning of this school year, we started off and discovered the elementary school, their iPad 2s, the iPad 4s, were suddenly unable to access the curriculum they needed. The iPad 4s are partially functional as far as that. The iPad 2s are basically door stops at yeah. this point. They just can't, they work, they look, work fine, but they can't access half the things because they can't be updated. So um, we scrambled and got them something in the students' hands but um, that's one of the things that we'll need to address. As Mr. May said, the PCs in this building, the teacher's PCs, are gonna be 10 years old. Um, I just had a um, evaluation, a network of assessment from someone done, and they said the turnover rate for computers should be 48 months. Um, we, we go a little longer. <laughs> um, the MacBooks the, for the teachers in the other schools are about seven years old. Um, we just recently put new, more extra memory in them, and fortunately that's got them functioning well enough that we can put that off like a year. Yeah. My initial thing was looking at the state of things was that my God, I've got to replace the MacBooks, the PCs, everything all at once. Yeah. Um, so we're gonna push that off for the, um, till year two. Um, so year one, which this is the same thing that's on your um, yep. sheet here. I just broke it out by year so that it was easier to focus on. Um, the 
The first thing you see is there's a cart of, couple of carts of iPad Airs at the elementary school right now that will be, ideally we would move those down to the primary school which has virtually nothing yeah. um, as far as technology. They're gonna be used, a few of them, we just gave them some of the older piece, um, excuse me, older iPads. Yeah. Um, we we'll replace those with, they're, they're gonna be broken up like in groups of six or so in the um, classrooms, they're gonna be used as um, groups, uh, workstation. Yep. What's, what's the name? Centers. Centers, Centers. thank you. There we go. Centers. Because um, obviously we don't have, you know, six-year-olds one-to-one with iPads. We don't have one iPads all day. That's, yeah, yeah. Not, that's, that's not right for them. <laughs> um, so the elementary school, um, that's where one of the, our greatest needs is is my plan is to purchase 260 Chromebooks to replace the rest of the iPad 4s. They ha already have one grade level worth of Chromebooks that were purchased um, this summer, summer out of school choice funds. I was allowed to do that, which was helpful. Mm -hmm. um, so the 260 with what that I purchased with what they have will give the whole school one-to-one -one Chromebooks up to date so they'll be able to use for testing, for accessing their curriculum. Um, they will keep some of the iPad 4s because there are a few uses for them that the teachers do with apps and things. Um, there's a couple of apps that they like to practice math on that won't work on the Chromebooks. So there's no reason to yank the iPads 4s yep. out of their hands until they're totally dead. Yep. Um, so for now, some of those will stay for occasional usage to supplement. Um, you see, I've got um, an iMac for the office. That's the secretary. Hers is um, it's running very slowly. It's also seven years old, and we cannot upgrade that to upgrade the memory to push that off. Um, next, if we go to the middle school, um, we were fortunate to get that grant from um, the um, state. Yep. Um, we purchased 180, mm -hmm. 100, 185 Chromebooks, which got us with what was already there, again, one-to-one. -one. Yep. However, it's just barely one-to-one. -one. So I just want to purchase, you know, 10 spare Chromebooks so that we have some for swapping out for like, oh, this one needs to repair or, oh, a new student moved in. Right. Right. So that just gives us a little breathing space. Again, an iMac for the secretary because again, seven years old, it's becoming useless. Um, a five pack of the MacBook Airs, um, the laptops, um, because be that's to be split between the middle and the elementary school and that is again just to give us, we're gonna keep the MacBooks the teachers have but we have no spares. So if a new teacher comes in, we're scrambling if one breaks down and needs repair, we've got nothing to, so this is just to give us a little um, breathing space. All right. Um, oh, okay, my thing is wrong there. I've got it at the middle school. It's at the high school where it says teacher PCs, 50 PCs. Yeah. That is the high school. Yep. Uh, again, those are replacing 10-year-old PCs. Um, that's about $40,000, that's um, assuming new. I could probably bring that down a bit if I went with um, refurbished, but they'd have to be replaced sooner. Yeah. So it's kind of a balance and act there of which you'd rather, whether you'd wanna pay now or pay later. Um, again, and these things are 10 years old, they are impact, at the point where they are impacting the teacher's ability to instruct. Yeah. Um, they go to turn on, they have to turn on the computer, be, you know, 10 minutes that. before <laughs> class starts. Um, it, yeah, it, it is, we'll be lucky to make them to the end of the year with these things, especially because I had to upgrade them to Windows 10 due to security reasons um, from Windows 7, and that really makes them run like molasses. Yeah. I, I can feel the teachers thinking bad thoughts about me while they're waiting for it to run or <laughs> to turn on, so. Um, so if we just keep 10-year-old software, we'd be all set. <laughs> yeah, but you know. Is that the solution? No? Uh, they keep updating it, you know? Yeah. <laughs> um, the other next that I have on there is the Office Apps Lab. Um, that's business, office apps. Again, 10-year-old PCs, and I know the teachers come to talk to me and says, I know you know it, but they're barely moving. Right. 
Um, and again, and it, that's changing. So it's like, okay, the teacher can log on and leave it logged on. And I have a s sneaking suspicion that many of them leave it logged on all week. Mm -hmm. um, but when you have a classroom lab, kids can't leave it logged on. They've got to log on and off and they're having to waste classroom time waiting for those PCs to boot up. Um, the next two items I have on there are things I'm hoping to actually get through capital, um, the capital projects funding. I'm going to bring that to them. Don't know what the chances are, but I've got them on here, but that's why it just kind of says capital in question marks, <coughs> which is um, the classroom projectors, and it says one half. Um, I'd like to be about one half of the projectors in this building are still the originals which, like I said, they're about 16 years old. It's amazing they have lasted this long. It gets to the point that even if it's still working, if a bulb goes out, I have to replace the projector. There's no place to get bulbs for them anymore. Um, so to try to split that, I'd like to do, you know, half of those projectors next year if I can get the funding, half next year. Um, that number is an estimate depending on what type I get. There's like interactive projectors, which would replace the functions of the smart board as well as the projector. But I'm not sure it's worth spending the extra money for the interactive features because only a small handful of teachers right. are using that, I've discovered. So, so those numbers will hopefully come down, but not, it's not going to be half, but um, it will be less. Um, I got the auditorium projector on there because, um, again, 16 years old. It's, um, it's going to just up and die without warning. Mm -hmm. And so I'd like to replace it before it does that with any, with, you know, our luck it would be just like five minutes before the annual town meeting mm. starts. Mm. So you, I, I said in our capital request, we went one yes. note yes. the yeah. town's dependency on that one. Yes, I, I will. <laughs> um, and the last item under year one is this um, central office computers. That's like a business office. Um, the superintendent, secretary. Um, again, those, those computers are not 10 years old, but they're about six to seven years old. And these are people that what they do depends on their computers. They're on there all day long. So those should be replaced soon. So, so for year one, a total minus the projectors, which I'm really hoping I can get through capital, we're talking almost $140,000. And that is a lot of money. I added up what the rest of my budget combined is, and it's about 190000 So if you add this, I mean, I'm basically saying I need to have my budget almost doubled. Um, so. I'll jump in just real quickly, Donna. To, I, I know I shared with you and, and with um, others that uh, recently there was a couple of meetings that I've run into, uh, Representative McKenna and Senator the Fat Man, and um, as you mentioned, they were gracious enough to, uh, to get us a um, building's worth of Chromebooks at the middle school this year, and uh, we were grateful. But it um, doesn't hurt to ask again. No. Please, sir, can I have some more? So I did talk with them uh, a little bit about it, and I know that you're working on a little bit of a plan to present to them anything they can do to help us out in, 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 in light of the fact that, as we had talked about in, in months and months ago when we started the school year, about trying to bring STEM to the pre-K pre all the way up to grade, um, grade five, and could we link it to that, that the need for you know, good computers to, to be working with uh, the STEM teacher, that we, that we, if we were able to bring that on board, that would be a nice way to maybe marry it together. Um, because I think the state would look at it as the opportunity to expand our STEM offering is linked to the, um, to the computers that we would be needing. And, and hopefully we can convince them to maybe come up with $65,000 or $64,000 for some Chromebooks again for us. It would be nice. You need the T for STEM. Yeah, T for STEM. You technology need, is... You need the, the technology yeah. to work. All right. So... So that would take, year one would take care of mostly a lot of this building. Year two, then we have to really look at those MacBooks that the teachers are using. And the, this is the other three buildings combined, primary, elementary, middle. Um, so I've got MacBooks for the teachers. 
the current MacBooks like I have here, like because the paras carry devices when they are working with students. Um, I wouldn't be buying them new devices, but the MacBooks that the teachers are using, because the paras are just basically taking notes, sending emails. So those older Macs we would use for that, so that we would still be getting some use out of those. Um, and we also have them for spares, mm -hmm. for when something died. It's like, well, okay, well, here's an old one. It's slow, but at least it's something. I'm, I'm gonna do my usual ask, ask a question that I think I know the answer to, okay. but um, any reason we can't use Chromebooks in place of the MacBooks at a much I, lower cost? Or we, We've discussed this. I know there are some schools that are discussing doing that. Yep. Um, problem is things like the smart boards, the Eno boards will not work with the Chromebooks. There are software programs that the students, I mean, excuse me, that the teachers use that they can't run on the Chromebooks. Okay. It, when, they're not quite there yeah. for what the teachers need. I, I would not feel comfortable saying to the teachers, this is going to be your only device now. Okay. Um, I, we, we've Makes thought sense. about it. At that it price they point, are a lot cheaper. I mean, I can get a lot of Chromebooks for, so. they won't last as long either. They do have a short lifespan, yeah. but still, you can get a lot of Chromebooks for what a MacBook costs. Okay. But I just don't think it would be feasible. Okay. Not yet. A yep. couple more years, who knows? Okay. Thank you. Um, and one thing on here is a MacBook Air cart, which again, we have a cart of the MacBook Airs for use at the uh, middle school. Um, things like the Lego Robotics uses it. Um, I think the STEM teacher is making some use of them. So that's something that probably should be replaced, but I think we'll look at it that more then and see what use with the Chromebooks. Maybe they don't need, it was felt when they just had iPads that they needed Yep. those for a lot of things. Maybe with the Chromebooks, they'll decide, no, we don't really need those. So I'll kind of see yep. what's happening. Um, again, the rest of the high school projectors. Um, and then wanted to start with the, um, the TV production and AutoCAD class. Those, project, um, those PCs are several years old. Actually, they were donations from WPI. And I will continue trying to seek donations from WPI mm -hmm. to take care of uh, some of the other needs. Um, and I think we had talked when we talked in this with the subcommittee about maybe switching these to the teacher PCs or the office apps lab in the uh, TV production. Right. Yeah, because the ones from the TV production lab would be actually adequate for the teacher's use. Yep. Um, so that's a possibility of swap swapping those year two to year one. Yep. But either way, we're talking 25 computers. Um, so the first two years are kind of front loaded mm -hmm. as far as the needs, just because it has gotten so bad mm -hmm. or we've fallen so far behind. Um, so the next years are, are much lighter. The year three, I have have just I want to start replacing on a cycle one third of the Chromebooks at the middle and elementary school so that we're on a cycle so that we don't have to do them all at once again. Right. So to spread that cost out, so on a three year cycle, possibly four, but that's about as much as you can reasonably expect out of the Chromebook is four years. Donna, speaking of the Chromebooks, um, at the high school we lease the Chromebooks. Yes. What were you, what's your thoughts? What do we do with the middle school? Do we, do we, we we, those. we own all those, yes. And is your plan for the elementary school, would we, would we purchase those as well? I would like prefer to do that, yes. Yeah. Um, I've discovered that trying to, leasing, it works great in as far as we get new ones every three years because it's a three-year lease. Yep. Um, trying to, but that means they all come in, they all go out at once. Right. Trying to keep track of where these are mobile things that are in the students' hands, wandering about, keeping track of those and making sure we get them all back by the day that we need to lease. It's not impossible, mm -hmm. but the thing is, we, whether we lease on a three-year cycle or we do start replacing a third a year, a third a year, we're, we're gonna pay one way or the other. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm hoping to be, maybe eke four years out of the Chromebooks. Right. So 
that kind of, especially at the lower grades where they're not going home, mm -hmm. they don't get the same abuse. Right, they should, they should last a little bit longer. Yes, right. so, but if we do a lease, then it's three years and boom, and we turn it over. Okay, you know, the option of stretching it. Um, yeah. And I did think of that as far as for the teacher's devices, um, because their PCs that are sitting on a table, or teacher's laptops, they're not as hard to keep track of. Mm -hmm. Teachers are a little more manageable than students. Yeah. Um, but again, because the leasing is, tends to be, we can only do like up to a three year lease. To do more than that apparently involves jumping through massive hoops and hoopla. And we don't really need to replace them every three years. Right. So we would end up replacing them more often, which would be great from the user end, but we would spend more money in the long run, I right. think. So, right. so again, so year three, I put up here on the primary school to upgrade network wiring, a cost, I don't really have a cost for that. That's just something that's kind of, and even putting that in year three is like a kind of random. I just at some point it needs doing. It needs to be on our minds. Yes. yes yeah. So I kind of put it in there. I have no cost with it, but I just kind of put it up there. Um, again, replacing the Chromebooks. And looking at starting to replace the projectors in the middle and elementary school. Yes, you say starting, but is, is that replacing all of them? Well, in that years, number is replacing over two years? all of them. Like I put, I initially had them all there and I said, well, that's dumb. So I changed that. Actually, so actually my, sorry, mine is slightly different. Okay. I changed this today oh, okay. <laughs> um, to put replacing the projectors at the middle school and then replacing the next year, the one at the elementary gotcha. school. Okay. Or it may be half at both schools and half at because it occurred to me, I'm looking, it's like, yeah, those don't need to be done all in one year. Yeah. Um, but they'll start, they'll start going. Right. Um, so, and then the, another one of the programming lab. Seven years They're old They're about right seven now. years old now, yeah. So. So they'll be 10 so years actually, old. Well, actually, that should probably even be switched to what I did here. I put middle school first and elementary, but since the elementary is built first, right. those are actually older, so. Maybe flip flop. I really would flip flop that. But anyways, um, so again, to try to get the high school PCs on a rotating cycle of replacement, so then we would do the, the programming lab. Um, and then the next year, year four, again, another third of the Chromebooks on the elementary and the middle school. Um, there's a robotics lab here. They have eight PCs. You know, that number may change because they're talking about maybe doing a robotics too. If it becomes more popular, they might need that. more. Yep. But there's that. And year five is pretty, um, I've just got continuing replacing one third of the Chromebooks. Other than that, I feel five years was a little long to, after the fifth year, then we're gonna start sort of again. Yeah, back to where, yeah. Um, Year five right now, I don't have much because it's, I don't know what year five will bring. Uh, the technology changes so fast that I didn't want to really lock in. No, that's good. Um, but even at the so-called lighter years, mm -hmm. we're still talking 142,000. Year five is 74,000. Yeah, that's yep. still not a. Yeah. That's yeah, not a drop in the bucket. Right. And that is not including any kind of other than I did not mention network wiring there, but infrastructure, servers, yep. things like that. Um, just because that's not as much on a rotating schedule, it's on an as needed, yep. um, but it is, there are expenses that will need to be done, but generally you get those in the budget. Okay. So um, well, that, that's. First of all, thank you very much, because it's very, it's very thorough. Um, yeah, I hope I didn't babble on too long. Sorry. <laughs> when you look at it, there's, um, I mean, the need is, is significant, and um, I think having a plan in place is going to help us. And having some money would help us. Too. <laughs> <laughs> the thing is, I know it is a, good, a great deal of money, but I'm looking at all these things, and there is nothing on here that I can say, well, no, we can do without that. It yeah. has to be done. Mm -hmm. And no, I don't know where the money's coming from, um, but I just know we can't continue in the state we're in. No, you gotta, you gotta know what the needs are, and you know, it's our 
our job overall to kind of figure out how to how to pay for it. So okay. thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Donna. Okay. Um, so the next thing on, on the superintendent's report, and Mr. <coughs> Filoni is here, so if you wouldn't mind joining us at the front of the table. Um, <laughs> For those who I uh, did provide at your place some information, um, as you know, we recently entered into, uh, I shouldn't say entered into <coughs> recently, we updated um, the um, memorandum of understanding between the Douglas Police Department, um, Brett in his capacity as the, student, as the school resource officer in the district. Um, very thorough document that, um, uh, office, uh, that Chief Ming Leonico put together and um, but Brett has, has a new friend. Maybe you can talk a little bit about your new friend and what the purpose of your new friend is. Not Mary, no. Uh, Mary, oh, yeah, was, she's an old friend, actually. You're, she's an old friend, so, so tell us a little bit about your new friend and, um, and, and how you see your new friend within the buildings. Okay. Um, well, first off, um, I'm happy to say that whatever I talk about tonight doesn't involve money. <laughs> it's not going to cost you a cent. So, um, so a little bit about um, the new uh, member of our department. Um, his name is Finn. If you don't know who he is or if you haven't seen photos of him. Um, he's a social media star. He is. He's a rock star right now. Yeah, he's, uh, he absolutely is. He's got his own Instagram page already. Of course he does. <laughs> yeah. Why would he? Right. Um, so, we, so Finn is a, he'll be 10 weeks old on Friday. He's an English lab uh, that we got from Boonfield Labradors, a kennel in Ringe, New Hampshire. Um, the idea came about, uh, Chief Miglianico did a lot of research and this has been something that he's been thinking about for a long time. Um, he approached me about maybe six weeks ago and told me of his idea and asked me if I would be interested in being Finn's handler. <clears throat> um, I'm a dog lover. Um, we have a dog at home. Uh, he, his idea at the time was, uh, you know, over the course of time, he wants to um, take Finn and um, work him into the, the general public, but more specifically, the schools. Uh, he wants to do a lot of community outreach with them at the library, uh, at the senior center in Riddlebrook and things like that. <clears throat> so so, um, so I, I jumped on board. And um, uh, I guess about four weeks ago, maybe five, we took, he, he and I took a ride up to Ringe, New Hampshire to visit the people. He, he, he found them online. He found them, um, there was a video out, th out there that they, um, they were um, portrayed in. So he contacted them. We went up and took a visit. Um, we met with the owners, um, we met with some of the dogs, um, and we essentially, during that visit, uh, entered into an agreement with them, um, and they uh, offered, agreed to uh, donate a dog to us free of charge. So two, uh, a week and a half ago, they brought Finn to Douglas. They delivered him on a Friday. Um, they picked them out, uh, and, and they actually, their kennel, they breed dogs specifically for this purpose, and I didn't know this ahead of time, and uh, we're still learning as we go, but this particular type of dog is, um, they have a great disposition, uh, super temperament, um, and the fact that they, their dogs are all AKC registered dogs, and the fact that they breed them for this purpose um, um, speaks volumes about, uh, um, they, they've placed dogs they have a dog, um, the state police has one of their dogs, and they're getting a second one. Lunenburg Police Department has one of their dogs, in fact has Finn's uncle, and his name is Hank. So he's in Lunenburg. Um, Franklin Police Department has a comfort dog, but it's not from the kennel, the same kennel. Um, so it's, 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 it's kind of a growing trend. Um, what I like about, the, you know, I, there's many things to like about it, but what I like about the idea is, if, if you don't know Chief Miglianico, he's very forward thinking, he's very progressive. Um, so we, we are by far the first department anywhere close to, um, to Douglas that, that has a comfort dog. <clears throat> um, so all right, I'm, I'm rambling. But anyway, so the idea is 
over the course of the next year, we're going to get him all the training that he needs. Um, he'll go through like a puppy um, obedience school, and then there's a, something called the good citizenship. Yep. Um, canine good citizen. Can, exactly, canine good citizen. Yeah. And then ultimately we'll go through an AKC-sponsored um, comfort slash therapy dog training with him. And that involves, you know, some rigorous testing at the end of it. And um, we're prepared to, you know, put all the effort into him. Um, this doesn't really have anything to do with you guys, but um, the chief, you know, told the selectmen and the town um, manager it's not going to cost the, the town a cent. Uh, whatever the costs are will come out of the chief's budget already or money that we take in through um, drug forfeitures or seizures and things like that. Um, so currently... Finn is, uh, uh, he comes home with me at the end of the day. Um, I, bring him home, I bring him with me to work in the morning. He knows Mary Sokol really well already. He's, he's um, introduced himself, to, and actually um, Neely as well. Uh, so we started to do, you know, uh, short visits, small visits, uh, brief visits in the schools. Uh, the, the feedback so far has been nothing short of fantastic, wonderful. Um, we haven't heard any ne negative feedback yet. Um, so I guess what we're looking for here tonight is, uh, and I, I have to thank Mr. Um, Mr. Maines for, for putting to, together this, um, this addendum. I think it's real creative. I think um, it kind of streamlines what we're looking to do. Um, so we put together this addendum, or he put together this addendum. The chief took a look at it. We, we, we are in agreement with it. And we're, I guess we're looking for your approval tonight to... Um, a couple of things with that to jump on, <clears throat> on what, what Brett has shared with you. First of all, it's important to understand that Finn is a therapy comfort animal. Right. Not an emotional support animal. Exactly. Yep. Which is, which is a, a very important distinction to be made within the schools, that Finn is not an emotional support animal uh, that would be used in, 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 for that purpose within our buildings. Right. He's also not exclusive to working and in, in being impacting just in the schools. You're going to take him and he's going to be, at, like, as you said, senior centers and other locations um, in, in, in providing comfort and, and also uh, to serve as a therapy dog. So as I was saying in the very beginning, we recently renewed our memorandum of understanding. So the, originally we were thinking about should this be a policy, and then we settled on the idea of just making this an addendum to what is a, a new document that we presently have. And so um, I, I looked at about five or six different um, sources uh, that are out there and, and sort of pulled them all together and came up with this plan. Um, and basically what we're, we're asking of you is that um, f you're giving permission for Finn to be able to be in our buildings and on school property, but with the understanding that while Finn is on property and in our school buildings, he is under the direct supervision of, of, of Brett and also uh, to, a, to a lesser extent the building principals and they would be responsible for main, managing what he's doing and while he's in the in the buildings. Uh, the expectation is f uh, for the police department especially, but it sounds like it's more on, on Brett's shoulders, that the that the licensures are up to date, the vaccinations are up to date, that well groomed and, and so forth, um, that Brett is directly responsible for him while he's in the building. Should Brett have a situation where he is uh, needed to, do, to deal with a matter, um, we've talked a little bit about um, having two locations <coughs> where um, we would be able to provide a crate within the, within the building. So Brett has an office directly below us here uh, that's big enough. We, we will be taking out the, the jacuzzi and the cappuccino maker, but Sacrifice. we will be able to put the crate in there so, yes. that, so that Finn will have a place to go. So I, I, I laud <coughs> Brett for giving up those creature comforts, but we could put a crate there and also a place at the middle school. I don't, the primary school, we, we didn't think that there was a location that we could, we could find in there. Um, and we have a tentative idea in, in, inside the um, elementary school, uh, but it's kind of in a busy thoroughfare, so we're not sure if, if in the library, in one of the rooms in the library would work from. So, and the idea being that if Brett has to, has to deal with something, there's a place for, for, for Finn to go and so forth. And, my, and just to add to that, the cruiser, we're, we're in the process of retrofitting one of our older cruisers, so we'll have a compartment in the back for him. So once that's uh, completed, that'll be another location. I could put him in the cruiser and, you know, he'd be fine um, there. We will, um, uh, with your permission, reach out to parents to get their feedback as to whether or not we have students with allergies 
um, anyone who has uh, any kind of phobias or fears. Um, and then we will, Brett will, 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 will be aware and, and the principals will be aware of those students and, and ensure to the very best of our ability that there's no exposure to, to Finn because of that. Um, again, I, I think the most important piece of this is that it's not an emotional support animal. We do not have a policy in place. We do not allow emotional support animals in our buildings as of right now. If we're going to go in that direction, that would be a policy that we would have to in, enact um, and it wouldn't be it wouldn't be related to this memorandum. It would be a, a specific policy. So we're not can doing I, emotional support animal. Can you explain exactly what the difference is between? I'll, an I'll emotional let him try to explain a little bit yeah. about what a therapy comfort dog does. Yeah, I think the the simplest way to explain it is so a, a therapy comfort dog is um, he is available to large groups of people, all types of people, as many as he can handle or she can handle. Whereas an emotional support dog might be assigned to one specific person. And a lot of times those types of dogs get assigned by psychotherapists or psychologists or doctors, okay. right? Um, to deal with a single person's own personal issues. Emotional so I think support that's dogs also have no training requirements. Okay. They're, they do not need to be trained to do anything in particular. Yeah. Whereas this and, and then the service service dogs. So we've had service we had a service dog <coughs> in the building a couple of years ago with one of our students. Um, and so we, we we had a policy that we put in place for the service dog, which is different again from emotional right. support. So for example, um, as an as an emotional support animal, a parent may child may need some some comfort some some support during the day and um the uh, they have a dog and they would like to bring the dog into the school right now we, we, we're not right. we're not doing that because within no time at all it would be like 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 one of the airplanes where every other seat is an emotional support animal um we don't we don't we're not at that place right now and if that's the direction that we're going to go um, should that be the case we would then need to come up with a really definitive and well-crafted policy that the state would, would, would provide us with uh, to do so. So it's a little bit different. It, it's my dog um, because I, 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 it, it relaxes me, it keeps me calm. And right. Okay, thing. thank you. So, so, and I just want to make sure that, that, that was the, the, the major piece that I wanted to make sure is that the public understood that we are not a, an emotional support animal buildings, uh, but this is very different. This is under the guise of the, um, the uh, police department and so forth. So, um, and, and so the, um, uh, the addendum, Basically, what we're looking for is for you to give me the permission to sign off on this document with uh, Chief Miglianico and, um, and, and, and put this policy attached to the existing memorandum of understanding that would allow Brett the opportunity to bring his uh, therapy comfort dog with him in, into the buildings with all those provisions that we talked about with right. regards to. Maintenance. Any questions for Officer Filoni? I have one mm -hmm. well one complaint that you didn't bring Finn mm -hmm. because <laughs> I met him and he's wonderful yeah well. um, <clears throat> and this is this may sound a little bit out there but this is coming from someone who deals with a kid with dog allergies as sure. well as other allergies um there's a million peanut butter products that are treats for dogs and I know we have policies as far as Correct. being a nut safe building yeah. so I would just like to throw out there that if he's going to be interacting and we know how kids get right in their face and usually get a lick in somewhere, that that's at least a consideration. Absolutely. As to, you yeah. Know. Yep. And I'm glad you brought that up because that's something I hadn't yeah, thought it's of. It's one of so, those things yeah. you, you deal with it once and you. Well, I think we're going to rely a lot on, um, on, the, on the nurses in each of the buildings. Um, we'll, we'll, we'll do our research and we'll have discussions and um, we'll find it. In fact, this afternoon um, at the end of my shift, I had a parent come into the lobby at the police station, and she has a seven. Uh, she, has, she has a seventh grade student in the district, and she was telling me how he's he's got a fear of dogs, mm -hmm. and so and it happened to be someone that I went to school with, so I, I knew him personally. So after ten or fifteen minutes of, of discussion, um, I think we came to the agreement that she's okay because Finn is at the age that he's at, and he's so small. Um, she's okay if we, her and I, are going to get, get together at some point and see if her son is amenable to meeting Finn, mm -hmm. and then maybe together we can alleviate or get him over that fear. Mm -hmm. So that's something um, I've already talked to the librarian in the elementary school, 
and she's um, she's talked to Mr. Bell, and she wants to set up um, like reading time for kids to actually like, sit and read to. And I've heard that kids who have trouble reading or, or um, don't like to read are more comfortable to read to a dog because a dog's not going to talk back they to them. Do the they don't library. respond, right? Yeah. They have, they have yeah. So sign up time all kinds of people have all kinds of ideas. So, and like I said, we're learning as we go ourselves because this is all new to us. But um, we we kind of we we basically have a year to work with. So all of the visits now are essentially socialization visits, right? Yeah. For people to know them and, and get to know them, and uh, we introduce them. And, and so we're going to go through all the training, and then by the time he's hopefully hopefully by the time he's a year old. He'll be ready to hit the ground running and you know do what he's meant to do. That's great. So yeah. So I, I just add in there. I'm wondering if when you put out the survey, which I think is smart anyway, um, about allergies and phobias. I mean, you're just mentioning the story of a person to see if they're going to be able to you know like attach to the dog and and be comfortable with the dog, especially right. because he's so young. Um, perhaps in the survey, you can give parents the option about whether if their child has a phobia, if they would like for you to encourage you know for you sure. to encourage contact or whether they know it's extreme enough that like this is really going to set them off i have two daughters who are afraid of dogs and i would love for them to not be afraid of dogs. yeah I, i'm so willing to work with yeah we can ones. and i'm willing to think outside the box and i told yeah. this this uh friend uh this parent today you know she, if it's something we can all agree on she can bring her son to the to the police station we could do it at the school i'd be happy to go to their house i mean whatever it takes to make you know something like that work yeah you know I'm just thinking there's some, some fears that are probably extreme and some that just need, you know, a little tending. To yeah, them. yeah, absolutely. Well, I'll, I'll be, I'll be <clears throat> up front and say that I do not like dogs. I do not like any animals, to be honest with you. Well, and that's why I was glad to hear that you're going to be around for another year because <laughs> I want to <laughs> take advantage of that time, Mr. Means. I'm going to make my, you a dog uh, lover before uh, this is all over. My daughters have, uh, have dogs now, and so um, <clears throat> they were good enough to give me a, a picture of um, – one of the dogs to put on my desk and so forth. So, um, and I carried that with me for a lot of years. I still don't like dogs. I like one out of the two. So, I mean, that's that's 50%. That's way that's way above where I thought I would be. But um, there are there there are people who just don't. And, and I understand that, and I respect that, and and we'll uh, we'll be aware of that. We'll we'll always you know keep that in mind. We're not, we're not looking to force it on anybody. Right. Um, and and in, in fact. Um, if, you know, if the principals in the buildings aren't comfortable for whatever reason with me coming in, I respect the fact that, you know, they have the, f the final say over what goes on in the building. I, I totally get that. And Finn will be spending time at the, at the station as well. It's oh, yeah. Like he, it's not like he's going to be in that building all day long. Right, it's, it's right. Oh, there'll be times that I won't have him with right, me. Right. So, um, yeah, so. Just to be in, in prepared in advance for it. You know, so. um, but if you noticed, if you look down at the consent agenda, because we wanted to present it to you, but it's also as a consent, so I don't know if you want to take that out of out of order and and uh, decide whether you would like to make a motion to approve the memorandum of understanding. I just want to say something in regards to what Mr. Main said, because I'm sure there's, if there's anybody listening, I'm sure that there are some people probably cringing at the fact that someone said they don't like animals, because there are people out there like that, and I get it, because I was one of those people that was scared, deathly afraid of dogs, Never wanted a dog in my life until I found out my son had severe allergies to cats. So we got a dog, and I'll tell you, my dog is like, if anybody knows me, he's my world. You ask to see pictures of my kids, I can't find any on my phone. I have dogs. That's it. So, um, I mean, the reality is that in this world, you go anywhere today, and there's, like, dogs everywhere, therapy dogs. They bring them into hospitals now and Airports. everything. Um, you name it, airports, you, you, ha you maybe get stuck on a, on a plane with a dog. So, I mean, this is a great opportunity for especially those people that have never experienced dogs for whatever reason. Um, I mean, I never thought I could like dogs in my life, and I'll tell you, my dog, oh, I just love him. I miss him right now. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so I think this is great, and I appreciate that because Finn is, like, so adorable. Yeah, he, we got lucky. He, we got a good one yeah. with him, yeah. He's okay. So I, I guess um, just to kind of explain, PDA this. Um, I look for a motion to take um, our agenda out of order and address the consent agenda piece that addresses this issue. So moved. That works. Motion yes. from Kelly. Second. Second from Lisa. Um, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed or abstained? Okay, so we'll take our agenda out of order and we'll 
move to the consent piece um, of this issue. So I would be looking for a motion um, to so grant Mr. Maines the uh, <laughs> permission to enter into um, agreement with um, Douglas Police Department um, for this addendum to the memorandum, memorandum of understanding between the Douglas Public Schools and District to include um, the provisions as stated before us here with regards to therapy slash comfort animal, otherwise known as Finn. So moved. All right, motion from Becky. Second. And a second for Kelly. Um, any other discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Uh, any opposed or abstained? Seeing none, motion passes. Thank you very much. Thank you for coming back out tonight and, and taking welcome. the time to explain it to us. Um, <coughs> we'll welcome Finn. I have not met Finn as of yet. You will meet Finn, Mr. Means. I guarantee it. I have not met Finn <laughs> at all as of yet. <laughs> bring, Finn, bring Finn in. Um, great. Thank you very right, much. Thank you guys very much. Thank you. Thank you. Yep. Good night. Uh, just a quick update on the mutual aid that was listed there. Uh, we did have a meeting. I told you I would get back to you. We met uh, with the superintendents of the Blackstone Valley. They have all uh, taken it. I have made some, uh, some adjustments to it, yeah. sent it to them. They are taking it forward. So I would think that sometime in the end of February, I'll bring it back for a final reading and for a vote uh, on the mutual aid. But it, it, it seems to be getting uh, favorable support. And with that, if I could impose upon Mrs. Sokol, our athletic director here at the high school, to join us. Um, we won, by the way. We did win, right? We did win. I didn't see the end, but we won. Boys basketball, she's talking about. Yeah. High school, varsity. Uh, so just, we had asked um, Mary to come back and give us some, some updates on um, her research into boys' volleyball and availability and possibility of securing any kind of program and so forth. So we, we throw it over to you, Mrs. Sokol. Okay, um, so I sent uh, an email out to the Central Mass ADs, which is all the athletic directors um, in Central Massachusetts on December 19th, um, asking that we're exploring the possibility of starting a uh, volleyball program in the spring. We're looking to see if we could schedule JV games. Um, said we're willing to travel and I got two replies. Um, Nip Monk, who's in our league, they, he said he would scrimmage two games at the JV level. And then the other person was Hudson, um, and that was it. Right. So those are the two teams um, that got back to us. So Mary, Did, just a quick question. Yep. Your, your spring schedule is scheduled when? When do you normally have your spring schedule completed by? Is it in the summer oh, or is it in the fall? It's, you're always two seasons ahead so, in the so fall. next week when we have an ad meeting i'm going to get next year's total schedule and i'll start working on fall. the fall schedule so like baseball is already done baseball was probably done before christmas right and that's it just always two seems to be two seasons out which, then is, you're scrapping which is around. common practice for most most school districts most schools yeah i looked up a couple of schools like bellingham they have 20 matches you know i just looked around off of that list that i shared with you and everybody was full so even if we move forward, we wouldn't, I don't, I can't see us getting games, right. to be absolutely honest. Um, my recommendation, you could take, take it if you will or not, is maybe just to have a club team at the high school after school um, and divvy up the teams and you can rotate the teams. Everybody's playing on two different squads. Maybe invite the middle school kids up and have them all play together. Uh, so they can get a taste of what it's like. Um, I don't know who would coach. That's something that we'd have to figure out um, if we're going to pay a coach. Um, how many days a week are they going to practice? Are they going to practice, you know, three days, which probably might be good. So that, that's something we could look at and, you know, take it from there. Um, so the, the only the only possibility is if we were to do a club this year, Yeah. And, and, and allow them to, to learn the game, we have a somewhat better chance of make, making it. I, I mean, I would recommend that we be a JV next year, but we could take our lumps if we wanted to because there aren't many, many programs that have JV programs. Correct. In boys' volleyball. Girls' volleyball, yes, but boys' volleyball, there are very few schools that, have, that feel the varsity in a, in a sub-varsity program. Correct. So you would be sort of into the fire next year with your first real competition being at the varsity level, which is, which is a stretch. Yes. Um, um, I was going to reach out to Mrs. Cicero. She was our coach when 
when we had a team and I pulled off the schedules from 2012, 13, 13 and 14 and 14 and 15. We had it for three years. We played the worst of schools over and over and over again. Um, Doherty, Burncoat, University Park, South, and then we played Valley Tech. I don't think they have a team any longer. I looked on the MI website. There was nothing listed for a schedule for the spring. Um, I did reach out to Dave um, Shea, who's the athletic director, and I said, Dave, um, do you still have, you know, all your volleyball teams for boys? He said, yes. I, so I mentioned, we're looking, would we be able to, like, scrimmage? And he said, he doesn't handle the scrimmages AD, as AD. He leaves it up to the coaches. Mm -hmm. So the coaches schedule their own scrimmages. So he wouldn't give us a game because he has schedules. So then you're looking at scrimmages. You know, scrimmages, do you get an official? So then it's, it's just kind of, you know, loosey-goosey, you know, and so a lot of loose ends. Do scrimmages during the year. If, if a team has a schedule, they can do scrimmages during the year. The, the risk they run is somebody gets hurt in a scrimmage, but right. the risk they run in practice is somebody gets hurt in practice as well. So right. you may be able to get some scrimmages, if you will, uh, with, with maybe some of the Worcester schools, if, if they still have programs and so forth. So that at least there's some exposure to it, but. Right, and I looked at Dave's schedule, and he has three, three, three games a week. Right, and that's the hard part. You know, so there's really play no a fourth learning. game. Yeah, that, that's tough because it can't count as like, a, it's just, you know, the kids need a little bit of downtime, right. you know, and for teaching technique, where volleyball right. is such a technical sport that there needs to be some teaching. So that's what, unfortunately, I wish I had better news. I wish I had 15 people saying, yeah, we want to play and we could have moved forward with you know, an actual organized team. Um, if you could give me some direction on how you want me to put it in for next year, um, you know, I don't need, I'll budget for it for next year. I, I always budget for it because I don't want it to disappear. Right. Um, but you know, I'll need to know, you know probably October if we're gonna make a go of it right. because then I have to go out and find those games. And whether it be the Worcester schools or um, Assabet was on it, and watch choose it, Division One, huge school. Yeah. So those are the teams you're looking at. You know, Medfield, who are phenomenal teams. So you know, you got to be. We want the kids to play, but what are we learning if we're going against team and just you know getting devoured every, you know, by a highly skilled team. So, so that's what if, I have if, to do if we could do club that and, and try to fig, look at team schedules and if they, they've got one game that week, would they be willing to come out? If they got two games that week, would they want to play on a Saturday morning type of thing? Which we can try to find some some competition for them. Right. Um, and they could play amongst themselves. Like right. you could have squad A, squad B for a week, and then you switch up the teams and you have different a different mix of kids. And then we'd have to find someone that could coach. Right. So we would need to figure out the dynamics of this also. You know, um, if, 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 if we can line up some scrimmages, are we going to have to go there? Because teams are not going to want to come to us because they didn't budget for them and so forth. And then we're going to need to figure out how many, how many trips can we afford to send. And, and then you'll have, yeah, you'll have to recheck the budget um, to see right. what's, if there's stuff left in those lines. That wasn't part of the plan. I mean, we can yeah. plan for next year yeah. okay. it, 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 going forward. But <laughs> this year it looks like if we can get a club up and running, Yep. maybe get a, a team or two to volunteer to come over a couple of times and, and play us. Where do we stand with regards to equipment? Well, I had, um, when I presented it last time, I had kind of had a, I had it all cut out as far as, we have, a, we have a net for the girls. We've got a brand new net, so we could use that for a game net. We have the nets that came with the building. They're, they're one into one. The poles are a little, you know, shaky, but um, I would probably have to get um, some new volleyballs. That's pretty much it. Uh, club team, we I would, if we're going to put them in uniforms, I'd have to buy uniforms because the ones they have now, the uh, strings and the shorts crackle when you pull them out. <laughs> so they're, um, they need to be throw, um, you know, taken out of service. Um, so equipment for volleyball is just pretty much basket, uh, volleyballs and a net, which we have. What is um, gym availability? Good question. Because I know it can get tight in the spring, especially early yeah. in the spring when the weather's bad. Right, so you have baseball, softball, JV baseball, JV softball, and outdoor track. Yeah. And it's kind of like, you know, what goes on during basketball is it's, the, the coaches are excellent with sharing and, and rotating. Um, we'd have to come up with a schedule. The problem with the gym is that the bat, that's where the batting cage is. Right. 
So, you know, baseball and softball need to be in there. Um, you know, and volleyball needs to be in there as well. So we'd have to sit down and come up with um, – I, I would sit down – have to sit down with the coaches and do the whole – the whole season schedule for indoor so everybody knew and parents knew ahead of time that okay we're seven to eight tonight mm -hmm. you know and how long are they using the indoor batting cage do they use that all throughout the entire as soon as they can get as out soon as they can get outside. out we kick them out yeah. Yeah. and they're brian outside. goes out in shorts when it's snowing anyway so the baseball team does get out a little yeah. earlier than most and john uses the municipal center if he can get it yeah. um to try to alleviate the backup in the gym yeah, I just know it can get tight. Yeah, and, and you know, so. track, you know, it's tough because they're running the hallways, right. you know. I'm just thinking if, if, if you're going the club route anyways and you're not going to be playing an extensive schedule, you can probably start that a little bit later. You could. Maybe wait until those other wait a couple have of weeks kind of out of the gym. Yep. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, because absolutely. You know, there's only so much practice you can do, too, before it's going to get cold right. for them as well. So right. I think March, don't need as, March as much 16th time. is the first day for spring practices. March 16th, so they'll be inside. Started in April with. Right. So if we started in April with the club, and you know the teams are outside, and, yeah. and if there's bad weather, then you know the varsity in-season teams the best the priority. have priority. And then if volleyball has to get bumped to six o'clock at night, then that has to be an understanding. Put it all on the table so we under everybody understands what's going on. Maybe we could make a beach volleyball court. Sure. <laughs> Put it next to the outside basketball court. Mm -hmm. Ooh, that's a good point. Um, so. I guess the next step would be we have a number of students who have signed up. Yes. Maybe you should meet with them to find out if they have a, if, if the interest is still genuine, if we're only going to be able to do club and, and try to get a couple of scrimmages if we can okay. uh, with other schools to try to get it going for this year and with the expectation that if we can <coughs> sustain the interest that we would look to put it online for next year. We had, I think we did three years. Yeah, it was three years. Boys volleyball, and then we tried co-oping one year, and, and we, we ended up, what we don't want to have happen is what happened is that we were signed up to play we 20 full games, schedule. and uh, all forfeit. of a sudden we had to call and, and tell all those schools that we're not playing. Uh, I think we had to forfeit all those games, too. Yeah, we did, and then it's then it becomes hard to reach out and say, hey, right. we're back. We're back again. <laughs> you want to play us? No, that's okay, because there's no guarantee. So. I'm, I'm glad you mentioned co-opt. Are there any co-opt opportunities around The only us? team around here in our league is, is Nipmunk that has volleyball, Menden. Um, Chris has a full squad, or he may co-op with Valley Tech. I'm not exactly sure. I can, I can look into that. Um, Sutton, you know, Sutton may be interested. You know, I mean, we could co-op with another team, but we have the co-op. Sounds like we have the numbers. The yeah. numbers, yeah. The MIA said, well, you got 17. How many do you need? Yeah. Right. Uh, I mean, right. if the numbers drop, we surely could. And, and, you know, there's a lot of sports that we could co-op with, I think, because a lot of kids want to play these unique. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, we have a girl that wants to play lacrosse, one girl. Right. So I'm looking for a place to her to, for her to play. Right. That, so my only, my only concern is, is, is sustainability. I well, I, I think last time someone asked me to talk to Paul, Paul does have volleyball standards that go in the floor at his, um, at his gym. At the elementary school. At the elementary school. So, you know, the best place to start sports is in the middle school because mm -hmm. we get them young, we get them there, they get an interest. So, I, I, you know, if, if he or, you know, if he could start something down there, you know, he may, have, he may have to play like a freshman team. There are some teams that have varsity and freshmen, not a lot around here. We'd both have to do some research. But that's where the interest, if we get them there, that we, we've got them. You know, like soccer self fills, self fills itself because they start this little. Right. Right. You know, well, volleyball is a great sport. So if he can drum up some business at the middle school and kind of continue to be that feeder, then mm -hmm. they'll take off and it'll be great. But we just need that feeder boys, system. Boys volleyball is, is a diff difficult one to sustain. It, it, has, it has been for, for us, but not just us, but for lots no, of other schools. Uh, yeah. There are some there are some leagues that have have a pretty strong like the Tri Valley does have well smaller schools because volleyball. you have the track and you have baseball, baseball. A lot of yeah. baseball. and so it's most of them are baseball or most of them are lacrosse that's that's and lacrosse. what's been and then, of course you've got track so you've, you're talking about three sports sustaining four sports becomes especially in a small school like us right. sustaining three sports would be very difficult you've got baseball you got track and you know the, I don't know that we would have a ton of, of additional interest but I would prefer to have it. But if we're going to have it, I'm hoping that we're going to have a run of 10, 15, 20 years of interest rather than, you know, two, three years. And then we're, we're back closing it back up again and, right. and so forth. I think currently the most of the interest is out of a group of juniors. Is that right? 
was it mostly juniors? I, I didn't bring the sheet. I'm sorry. I and apologize. Sixth graders. Yeah, the like, sixth grade the was grade, huge. There was a big, the yeah. sixth grade numbers were huge. So if there's really? a way to get it in the middle school, school. right? Um, and whether it was, it's inviting them up for the club at this point or right. getting right. a club in at the middle school, yeah. that may be the way to build it. So the it. middle school, we'd have to do portable uh, 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 temporary nets because there's no there's no Paul standards there, in the in the Paul middle said school. there was. Holes in the floor. The elementary or the elementary? Or the elementary oh, oh elementary. Oh, he's in the elementary. Middle. I keep thinking he's in the middle school. So even Not if they the played school. down there, I mean, so at least. So you have to do, you know, those standards, the temporary standards that you, yeah. that you roll out and they have weights on them and you, you play off. Well, if you do it at the elementary, they can move over. You could, but they could. the only difference with that is that the elementary is an hour later and they also use it for the enrichment program. Yeah. yeah. Right. And no easy answer on this one. No. no. Yeah, not no. to complicate things farther, but you mentioned lacrosse and I, like, I hear a lot of buzz around here about lacrosse too so that makes me nervous that we go so far far forward with volleyball and then in five years there's a wave of kids that are like okay we don't want to do volleyball we want to do lacrosse so I don't you know right in, in the th there's a have baseball and yeah. then baseball well there is no I don't know of any um, youth lacrosse programs in Douglas per se I know there's a lot like there's in, in Barraville yeah. yeah. the girl no, the, the young lady that plays plays in Barraville yeah. And she's looking for a place to play, and you know there there were there was some interest a couple maybe a year and maybe two years ago in girls lacrosse. So I called them all in. I go, okay, how many have a stick? How many have goggles? How many have ever played? None. Right. So it's very difficult to start a varsity sport, especially lacrosse, um, with juniors and seniors because it's it's a very technical sport. You know, it's not that. I think it'd be great. <coughs> As I said, every you know they've got to, you know, do the club and then maybe bring it into the middle school. Just in, even in phys ed class, even in gym class. Yeah, I think that's that's sort of what I'm yeah. getting at is that maybe some of these other potential sports yes. that we could be establishing JV teams yes. down the road. Maybe we want to see if we can incorporate those into PE mm -hmm. at the younger ages first to sort of. Yeah, I have. I, I got 24 sticks of um, from the USA um, field hockey. Yeah. And I'm going to give them down to Mr. Smith yeah. and to um, the middle school PE person to try to bring it in to the <coughs> that curriculum. Thank you. So, okay, so just let me know what you want me to do, and I will do it. I mean, I think I think honestly, the best answer is would be a co-op opportunity with somebody who already has a program that's fledgling, and we can we can we can maybe you know prop yep. it back up again, but. I don't know of anybody in the area that's looking for that. That and has fifteen boys. is a lot to bring to a co-op. Right. Well, like. I don't. I, I mean, if, if if you were bringing fifteen, you would think that they would be doing varsity JV, and the kids who were a little bit younger could do with the JV program or the right. freshman program. Um, but I don't know anybody in in the, in the certainly not in in, um, in Swickle or in in the Dual Valley that has boys volleyball. Just Nip Monk. So Just I guess to monk. see if. Like you said, if, if the, these kids that were interested would still be interested if it was just them playing against each other. Right. Okay, so I can, I can call them down. may or may not want to do that. I'll probably wait till next week because we start back up with, um, from classes for midterms. I don't, want them, I don't want to pull them out of class the first day. Okay. They're going to say we start back school because I, like, no, I no, feel like there's been no school. No, 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 they start back with classes. I don't want to miss in the first, you know, of third quarter. All right, well, Mary, thanks. thank you very thank you. much thank you. for your information, and thanks for your, your late work on this. And that was everything for the superintendent's report. Um, sorry, next on the agenda. School committee and subcommittee uh, reports, our accounts payable report. On January 16th, 2020, I signed 10 batches totaling. $146,135.09. Nothing unusual. Okay. Um, and I apologize. We, we did have a budget subcommittee on January 15th, and I should have had it added to the agenda, but just my notes from that. Our, our agenda was uh, technology planning, the, the information that Donna presented earlier. We had a, a longer conversation on, on that. Um, just um, some special education um, openings, not any new needs, but just court, uh, Neely gave us an update on some um, positions that have been open um, for some time now that um, have not been filled um, and, you know, starting to look at some other options um, for those positions at this point. Um, had a uh, discussion on staffing and some um, retirements that have already come up um, for next year. 
um, as well as discuss discussion of some stipend positions um, for some some um, clubs that are either existing um, at a, on a volunteer basis or um, new clubs that that um, have been sought out in unified sports as, as well um, and had a discussion on, on those and what potentially the stipends would be. Um, nothing that I think we would act on this year, but you know, ask Mr. Um, Maines and Ms. Keegan to make sure if you know if we're pursuing these to, to include them in the first draft of the budget. Um, of you know, at least for their, their cases, if you know, I, I leave it to the discretion as, as to what they present to us. But um, it was something that we would try to address for next year, if, if anything. Um, and then just um, a general discussion on um, FY21 budget and. Um, projection kind of assumptions there. So that was our budget subcommittee. So just a couple things with that. Sorry, is that on the consent agenda? We were supposed to ask you to vote for getting rid of um, the more obsolete iPads? Right. Yep. Yep, that's still coming oh, up. Wait, wait, no, that's down below. Yep. Oh, if you, oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. I thought you was Ted Moore. No, we, we jumped just, just, just that one consent agenda item that we're going back. Yep, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, no worries. Um, <laughs> but coming back to that, in the middle school, I believe, really, we have three positions that we haven't been able to fill at this um, time? Yep, two paraprofessional and one ABA. Um, so we continue to um, post and look. To, to post, repost, and repost, and review, and we just can't see the time. So we will continue our efforts, but um, Mr. Delaney and I have started talking about other avenues because um, we're, we're pretty tight. Yeah, Brian has done a two or three interviews the last couple of days, but. Can I ask, obviously you don't know, but is your opinion that it has to do with the pay or is it that the people aren't out there looking? I think 50% of it, I, I think sometimes we find the correct people and pay can influence. And I think the other 50% Okay. So, um, I, I imagine similar to our district, other districts have added a number of paraprofessionals over the years, and the the population of people with a you know an inclination for that work and their quite qualifications has has dwindled um, <laughs> currently. So, um, it's just a, it's a tight labor market right now. You know, so, um, okay. Um, and just other notes on school committee and subcommittee reports. We do have a, a negotiation subcommittee meeting uh, tomorrow morning um, with our initial proposals with the DTA, that meeting happening next Tuesday, 28th? 28th, yes. Yeah, yep. Tuesday the 28th. So. And just an update that um, Neely and I are scheduled to meet with the DTA on the 27th after school. One of the things that will be on the agenda is to talk a little bit more on those uh, positions that you just mentioned, the clubs and organizations. Okay, great. Okay, with that, we now will move on to our consent agenda. Um, and we have a couple sets of minutes, minutes to um, approve here. <coughs> so December 18th is the meeting that I was not in attendance. Is that one? No, yep, I was. That's the one you wanted. Okay, to yeah. Anyone have any amendments, corrections, additions, subtractions, anything? If not, I'll be looking for a motion to approve the December 18th, 2019 school committee meeting minutes. <laughs> I move to approve the December 18th, 2019 school committee meeting meeting minutes. All right, we have a motion from Becky. Second. Second from Lisa. Any other discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Oh, I'm actually, I am going to abstain. Um, so the motion passes. Four ayes and one abstain. Pardon, no taker. Um, and then we have our January 8th school committee meeting minutes. Um, There's one on this um, page two in the consent agenda. Okay. Uh, Ms. Mulder and Ms. Grady abstained. It was me. I abstained, not Ms. Grady, because I had not been at the uh, finance uh, committee yeah. meeting. Uh, December okay. 10th. I gotcha. So not Ms. Grady, Ms. So Charney. on the 
So not Miss Grady, it was Miss Charniak. Okay, so Miss Mulder and Miss Charniak abstained. And that was on the which date? The January um, 8th one? Yeah, the January 8th, on page January 8th two. Minutes. Yeah. Right, January 8th minutes, page um, two, agenda. under consent so agenda. Good, yep. Thank you. Okay. Any other notes, amendments, updates? Okay. I have, um, I have one. Yeah. Um, under the FY20 general fund budget report, yes. it says the cost to add a kindergarten teacher would be 47127 and kindergarten para would be 21082 um, We already hired those positions m months it should, ago. Should it it's just all be. I was doing was making note that they were left in the negative in the budget because we're waiting until the end of the year. So we can just kind of adjust that. Um, and I don't know what, in total, what we have there is 84,46972. I have no idea what that is. Yeah. Because um, I don't have it in front of me. I didn't, have, I didn't look at it before. Um, and we didn't say that we were hoping that they would cover both unbudgeted costs. It was really one of them that the um, town administrator had said that he would cover, he would hope to cover at the uh, town meeting. So I think maybe that, I don't know why, it's just funny that it's quoted in total. It's like it doesn't refer to anything, but I think it may be that I was talking about um, things that we've expended this year that we didn't expect. But the two, the oh, two projects be. were only like 40, you know, 40, 50, somewhere in there, not 84. So the, I the grease trap and the, the, the no, it no. just yeah, no, that is great. But the two together don't. But there was maybe another one that um, middle school, but I don't think that it would come to 84. But I don't know. I'll have to just take a look at that whole thing. So should we defer these meeting minutes until yeah. we can get yeah. that corrected? Yeah, why don't we do that, please? Like yeah. And then uh, after that, it says it, it, under my general fund budget report, it says a discussion was held regarding Mr. Lashpel's retirement and long-term subs. I think. I, I think, think there was a very Mr. Mains brief made, but that had nothing that. to do with the general the budget report. Yeah, really. it didn't have any. Yeah. I think it was yeah, it was know. a bit of a non sequitur for me, yeah, right? Just. just a, Asked, yeah. His name came up, and I asked about yeah. his retirement, but it really had nothing to do with your report. Yeah, why don't we table um, it until next time? Then I can get it, get the specifics. Okay, thank you. All right, so we will table that item. Um, next up, we have our Douglas High School Student Council trip to Hyannis, Mass. High School, and who is the advisor to the Student Council here in Douglas High School? And I'm sorry. A, a, a annual trip. That we, right. that we have. Yeah. Could you read yourself, yourself again? I, I missed that. Oh, it's okay. I'm Alicia LeClaire. I'm the student council advisor and Spanish teacher here at Douglas High School. Um, and I'm just here to request approval for the annual Massachusetts Association of Student Councils trip to Hyannis, um, which is a conference that students in all across Massachusetts attend. Um, I went last year as well. I think that Josh probably um, did the approval request that year because I was... Not here, um, but um, so yes, it's on March 4th to March 6th this year, and it's at the um, Hyannis Conference Resort and Conference Center, and um, yeah, it's, I mean, it's an opportunity for the students to um, learn, attend workshops, and they also, there's students that host workshops, and I also attend um, like advisor workshops, and there's speakers and um, activities. Activities uh, and uh, will we be running into the ocean again? Or will oh yes, there's the polar plunge for Special Olympics. Yes, the students want to do that again. So um, I watch from afar. <laughs> it's already so cold because it's. I don't blame you. We're on the beach and it's windy and it's yeah. March, but you know. It's for a good cause, so. I see you have 12 spots that you're looking to fill. Uh, I'm yes, um, we actually have, we have more than that. We have 15 <coughs> students that are attending and we also, we are, we should be getting the extra room because we, um, I've been talking with the people, so they usually, they just give that limit and then they kind of, you know, make amends to um, whatever schools might need. And so I have another chaperone coming, um, Nicole Noe, who's the senior ed uh, class advisor. And yeah, okay. the permit. Yeah, so it's something that happens every year, right? And permission slips happen, and I have a meeting with the parents or guardians of uh, each student attending. Okay. And you're leaving in the morning on March fourth. Yes, back. and we go on the bus with um, 
Oxford and Sutton High so we do student council. Okay. So we, we yeah. oh, share a bus, yes, to alleviate costs and all of that. And so that we can have a nice coach bus instead of a school bus. <laughs> nice. And so we'll be back on Friday the 6th, like <coughs> after school is already over, but right. they know that and their parents, they have rides set up and all of that stuff. And then we, they come in a little early on Wednesday morning and I check their bags just to make sure that they don't have anything that they shouldn't have, but right. no problems last year, so. Yep. Right. Right. Yeah, my only question, I'm not sure anyone in hell can answer, but I don't know, Hyann has cornered the market on all these conferences for, uh, <laughs> it's the school committee, the, <laughs> the student council, the, <laughs> the superintendents. It's one of the only yeah. places in, in, on the, 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 the Cape that you can yeah. get to in a reasonable amount of time and has enough rooms That's and enough yeah. space to, to, to host conferences and so forth, so. Gotcha. No, they did a good job for the one that I, I went out there, so it was just a bit of a trip, so. All right, um, any other discussion, questions? All right. Uh, sound, like, sound like you were gonna say something, Kelly. Nope, I'll <laughs> just, I'll move to approve the Douglas High School Student Council overnight trip to the Student Council Conference Center in Hyannis, Mass. from March 4th to March 6th, 2020. Motion from Kelly. Second. Second from Lisa. She beat you to it, Becky. Mm -hmm. Any other discussion? Time. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed or abstain? Seeing none, motion passes. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Get video of the kids going in the water. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Any pictures as well, send them out. Okay. okay. <laughs> So. You know, I'll put, if they raise enough money, I'll do it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Good night. Good night. Um, we've already um, approved our um, motion with regards to the memorandum of understanding uh, with Douglas Police Department. So now we get to Ms. Sosa's disposal of obsolete iPads. <laughs> I know. I can't wait to get rid of these things. Okay, we're just looking to, for approval to dispose of approximately 200 iPads. You have the list and all the serial numbers there. They're the iPad 2 models that are pretty much obsolete and of not much, any use to us anymore. When do we get them? Just out of curiosity, how, do you remember how long ago it was? I think it was about well, seven years. Those were original with the building project. Actually, we actually <coughs> got the That's twos right. before right. the building right. actually was started yeah. Yeah. being built so that we could start. I remember that post eight years, yeah. I'm going to ask the silly question just so it's asked. There's no point in trying to sell these to anybody who's going to break them apart for pieces or anything like that, is there? I have tried a few places that buy used technology. I found one that would give us, it would be something like $5 a piece or credit towards things, but I'm not sure. I've been talking with um, Courtney about it, and I have to talk with more about whether the um, finance rules would allow us to do it okay. yep. with this company. Um, so that's something I would have to talk with um, Courtney about. I mean, if I can, if I could get, you know, I got a quote from them again, depending on when I send them in the condition. Right. You know, if I got credit because they sell refurbished things, I might be able to get one or two refurbished MacBooks. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, if, it, if it's possible to do it, it would be great. Yeah. So once this is approved, so I'll look into that, but okay. But do, do no we one's clamoring have, to buy them. Yeah, let's say, uh, already, say that. How, how would they be disposed of otherwise? We already well, have a we company. We go through a company that um, our technology goes. They they take it with at yeah. no charge to us. It's recycled. You know, the batteries will be pulled out and. Yes, yeah, so I, I was actually thinking the opposite. I'm like, there's not. I'm surprised it wasn't a cost right, to go along with it. No, there's actually no cost to us to yeah. get rid of them. Because <laughs> I'm sure there's enough that they can find the salvage to offset whatever the recycling costs are. Then for the stuff that you know is hazardous or whatnot. Mm -hmm. So, will they take my 32-inch Sony Trinitron that's in the basement? <laughs> <laughs> I would love to get rid of it. <laughs> nobody, all nobody, three, all 300 it. pounds of it. Yeah, oh, okay. <laughs> it's brutal. <laughs> You get a forklift and you get it in here. Right. And, uh, but it was high definition. <laughs> <laughs> 160p? What a little yeah, well, back yeah, then. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. All right. Um, any other questions for Donna on this? Oh. Feels like a no-brainer. Looking for a motion in that case. I move to approve the disposal of iPad 
twos as delineated on the attached listing entitled Douglas Public Schools listing of functionally obsolete iPads, school committee meeting January 22nd, 2020. A motion from Becky. Second. Second from Kelly. Any other discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed or abstained? Saying none, motion passes. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks. Thanks, Donna. Okay. We are up to our school business and operation manager's report. Ms. Keegan? Um, I don't have anything this evening. Okay. Thank you. Um, topics not anticipated. Seeing none. We do not need executive session this evening. Oh, I'm looking for you. Oh, one other, one matter, Sally, not topics anticipated. We did discuss that we, our upcoming schedule, we have our February 5th is our next meeting. Right, you were looking we believe for believe we would like to have, so normally the following meeting would be two weeks later, which would be in the middle of February vacation, which we are not going to problem. have a meeting then. But we do need another meeting um, prior to February 25th when we go before the Finance Committee again. So I, I think um, we're looking to have. Are you talking about the budget? I'm sorry? Are you talking about the FY21 budget? Yes. Um, yeah, it's, I've made a lot of headway, so I think we so maybe all So do you not, maybe not need the February 12th need meeting? It. Yeah. Okay. So we yeah, could. Working hard to get it done by next Tuesday. Okay. So we could maybe. So if we could just keep way. our calendars clear for February 12th in case we need it. Yeah. Um, but but it I'm hoping like to bring it on the 5th. Ms. Keegan's That's putting a her clean effort into our budget, and maybe she'll have it ready for us for February 5th. It sounds like the plan now. So. And I'm sorry, did you say the 25th is when we go before FinCom again? The 25th, all right. Let me make sure I have that right. They asked to see us again. Um, Feb 25, the Tuesday evening. Yes. Okay, I just. Yep. Um, of course, it's going to have to be noted that it's, it's preliminary. Right. Preliminary budget. Absolutely. Very preliminary. Yep. Very preliminary. Yep. We also have negotiation meeting on that, yep. that afternoon. And yep. then, yes. So, and they're looking for us to come to the finance committee after that negotiation meeting. Mm. Well, that's going to be a long night. It was the 25th as well. Maybe we're going to cover that tomorrow. Okay. Yeah. 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 So we'll okay. just make sure that the negotiation meeting is done at 6 so that we can get over there for uh, yeah. that part. Mm. And if that becomes an issue, we'll look at having FinCom reschedule us if we have to, so. But I would hope that we should be able to get there. Well, uh, while yeah. we're talking about calendars, um, do we have any idea of when the next school calendar is going to be brought to for discussion? It's usually around this time, february -ish time. School calendar. Scale in. Ms. Mulder's favorite topic, our school calendar <laughs> for next year. Yes. So, I'm sorry, this was from Josh. I, I should have mentioned this. Josh Romano was just texting me saying he's uh, not going to be in tomorrow. I should have, I'm sorry. Yeah. Uh, Josh's uh, dad passed away, and um, today was the service, and uh, he, he, he had indicated he was going to be in. He was telling me that he's going to be out because he Mr. needs another day. Yeah. So, Our thoughts uh, are with Mr. Romano. Uh, so, but anyway, so the calendar, um, the calendar in, in rough draft is, is, is ready. Okay. But one of the things that we were talking about today was um, there, we would like to come before the committee on um, – What's the, the February meeting? Fifth. 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 So um, the primary school and elementary school would like to request two additional half days for professional development. Okay. Um, and they have they have a, they put together a presentation. So we're, we're sort of holding it until you decide whether or not that's something that you want to do, and then we would agree on some dates, and then we can bring it forward at the at the um, uh, in in the end of. Oh, the, the first meeting, in, I guess, in March then yep. uh, for approval at that time. Okay. So it is it is in rough draft, but we do want to get together and see if, if the committee is amenable to that. Okay. Uh, Just as part of that discussion, if we include kind of what our, where we stand with regards to time on learning and what the minimums right. are and where we currently right. stand on that. So that's to, I'm, I'm sure it's covered, but just yeah. to, you know, So the elementary in the middle, and I'm, I'm sorry, the elementary and the primary now, so. <laughs> way, way over yeah. the time on learning, yes, so, so they yeah. can afford to do so. Um, uh, one of the things that we're hearing is that they that I should, we've been doing the vertical teams this, and then we did the horizontal during this, the professional development day, uh, and that went very well. And so, but we know that if we continue the work with some additional time, we, we think we'll continue to make some progress on curriculum, on on working between different grade levels and so forth. So it's it. Um, well, they'll present it on the, on, on this. I, th I think it's a great idea for them. Uh, I don't think necessarily for the high school and the middle school is, that it makes much sense, but for the for the lower grades, it would make some sense. And there would be no 
busing cost or anything. They just swap the uh, bus route yeah. times and so forth. Gotcha. Okay. Sorry. Nope. Thank you. Um, okay. So with that, I will look for a motion to adjourn at 8.35. So moved. Motion from Becky. Second. Second from Julie. No, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed or abstained? We are adjourned.